yesterday uh, is the president of many countries in Europe. Uh, my name is Christina Haska Seifu. Uh, one thing I have requested uh, very much later. It's your job, that's it. 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 But someone else is going to get it. Today I'm going to talk about compost making at home. It's really so easy, guys. It's nothing to worry about. And... Oh, no, no, no. I will ask you first. No, no. Spoiler. Okay, what is a compost? <laughs> <laughs> what is a compost? Do you know it? Actually, we can say that it's a decomposed organic material. Okay. Some say that it is soil. Some say that it is fertilizer. But I place it in the middle, in between. It has same the same ingredients with soil and fertilizer, but I cannot say that it's a soil because it's not a natural product of the nature. We are doing it. I cannot say that it's a fertilizer. Similar ingredients, but in between. Okay, place it in between. What is it made of? Decomposing plants I'm using. Food waste. Recycling organic materials I'm using for it. And also we need air and uh, water. Okay, what are the ingredients? I'm using brown materials as a carbon source. I'm mixing it with the green materials as a nitrogen source. Okay, so uh, the microbes, microorganisms will play a big role uh, in this process. So, they need carbon and nitrogen to build their cell structure. <coughs> I can use as a brown material aged hay, old hay, cardboard you can use, dry shredded leaves, sawdust, cheap wood, cardboard, egg cartons, shredded paper, paper towels, straw, toilet paper rolls, wood ash, but not coal ash. Why do you think? Why? Why I cannot use coal ash for it? Heavy metals, guys. Yeah. Unfortunately, it is. There are some useful minerals in it, in uh, coal ash, but also there is a heavy metal risk, like cadmium, mercury, arsenic. Okay. And what are the green materials? Vegetable trimmings, algae, grass clippings, kelp or Seaweed, green shrub prunings, tea bed, alfalfa. Alfalfa, have you ever heard of it? It is legume, it's so good, it's rich in nitrogen. We are using it as a green fertilizer. Coffee ground filter, tea bags, animal manure, but herbivores only, not carnivores. Uh, house plants, weeds, but without seed heads. Of course, because otherwise, if you are using weeds for composting and if it seeds, it will just germinate in your plant bed, you know? It will invade it. Old flower bouquets, human or animal hair, aquarium water, fresh water only. Why? Because of the pathogen risk, yeah? Okay, chemical treated wood, you cannot use it, it's so clear because it's a chemical, yeah? Disease plants, of course you shouldn't use it. Human waste, but pet waste, as I said it before, you can use herbivore manure, but you cannot use carnivore manures. And let's move on. Meat, dairy products, animal food products, animal bones, pets, pets and oils, cooked leftovers, peanut butter, lime, glossy paper, paper with colored ink, seafood, bread products, wheat with seeds. You already talked about the wheat. But I want to ask you, uh, we all know that the menu is so good when we are doing fertilizers, but I'm saying that it is inside the novels. Why do you think, why I cannot use animal menu, especially carnivore, cats or dogs? It is a good source actually, it's rich in minerals, but why I should not use or beware, be careful about when I'm using it? What are the reasons? What about the smell? 
when it's decomposing, they are giving out a putrid odor. It's so disgusting. The first reason, second one is the parasite risk, of course. Yeah, pathogen microorganism risk. You can virtually recycle anything edible. If you want to use these meats or dairy products or rice, you should put them just inside the, the center of this pile because the heat will rise up it, at the core. It will rise up and reach up <coughs> under the center centigrade degrees. It, the heat will rise up and the pathogen risk will just go away. Okay, animal bones, what do you think? Why should I be careful when I'm using it? Because it's the composition process is too long for animal bones. And fats and oils, because it makes everything waterproof. If it's done, something is waterproof, it means that no oxygen or water goes inside it. I need to oxygen and water influences inside this compost to the composition process start but unfortunately if it's covered with the oil and fats it's impossible okay what do you think how long will it take to form uh, only one centimeter soil i think many years how many um, one or two i also believe two years two years yes okay. and yes Six months. Cool. Uh, anything else? <coughs> you are not in the clothes, guys. Because it's a little bit too long. <laughs> cool. Cool. No, no, it's close. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it might climb it 200 to 400 years. Wet tropical areas 200 years, but accumulation of enough substances to make a soil fertile 3000 years. You are the winner. Yeah, 3000 years. That's why it is considered as a, a non renewable resource. Oh my god, it's a long time process. Can we facilitate? Yes in 18 days with Berkeley method but as I said it before it is not soil of course I'm talking about compost making but it is we can we can get a soil like mixture in 18 days we can do it method what is the method you will mix greens and browns wet to break them down into humus and you should provide the air Shredded plant matter. The smaller the better. Okay? Because you are increasing the surface area. Carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, water. We need. As I said before. But you should balance the air water. Carbon, nitrogen, uh, nitrogen balance is important. It is about 20, 21. If it's more than this, it means that you have too much carbon uh, add a little bit nitrogen source if it's below 15 means that it is a nitrogen rich mixture so maybe you may need carbon a little bit if the composition process doesn't start probably the heat is not enough heat must be between 55 to 70 centigrade degrees. Organisms play a crucial role in this process. They break down organic matter, chemical decomposers, bacteria, fungi, protozoa, and especially at the beginning of this phase, mesophilic and thermophilic bacteria play a crucial role. These are the physical decomposers: snails, slugs, sawbugs, springtails, flies, rotifiers, and beetles. At the beginning of the process, uh, you see that there's a sharp increase in the heat. It reaches up to 60-65 centigrade degrees and then goes down. We are going to see the hot composting method because we want a quick result. Uh, composting methods, actually you don't need to do anything else. You are just piling up the ingredients, okay? The browns and the green materials, you are just 
putting them in somewhere available and you just wait. You don't need to do anything about it. But in hot compost method, you need to care, take care of it. You need to provide its air, control it, uh, check it every one now, now and then. When you compost this with the worms, you know, the red riddles or red worms, we are saying it in here, California worms, California riddles. In industrial scale, they are doing it in vessels. I erected static pile and windows, as you see. I wanted to show them to you. But at household level, we are, you can use composting toilets. Window culture, have you ever heard of it? I don't have enough time, unfortunately, to explain it, but please check it as well. It is a so good method, window culture, okay? It's an old, ancient method for composting, actually. So, where we compost, like soldier flies, are used for this process. Bokashi compost, anaerobic methods, I don't prepare. Perfectly with the method. See, the red wriggles is making their work the right side. And now, in day two.